Hello, welcome back to our next installment of how to create a landscape. And um, today we're going to start to drop in some objects. Now, in this case, we're going to um, drop in objects from uh, Quixel from the bridge. Uh, for this, you need to have the Megascans plugin installed. So if if you don't have this here, uh, make sure it's downloaded. Then go to plugins, type in Megascans and uh, make sure you enable this, then you have to restart. Um, you've done this before, so you just need to make sure that this is there. So um, now let's go to bridge and we're gonna find ourselves uh, one or more objects. So here's bridge. And um, in this case scenario, I've seen there's a tundra. Yeah, there's this new tundra of things, so uh, very large actually, and it just fits very well into what we've created here. So all you need to do is, you know, when you click on this, um, it will show you your your resolution options right here. Um, you know, it, again, it depends on how close you get to it. If it's really, really close, then 8K may be, uh, uh, you know, maybe something uh, you're interested in. Uh, a lot of times 2K will be fine. So, you know, it, it's really a matter of, of how close we're going to get to it. I'm probably just going to stick right now with 4K. Um, but this is, you know, your decision to make. Again, uh, Oftentimes less is, is more, you know, you don't want to bog down your your engine. Um, all right, let's see, I've already downloaded one. So here, this one is already downloaded. Once it's downloaded, so you click this, and it's going to download. And once it's downloaded, you're going to have this little check mark. And then all you do is click this plus sign, and it will uh, push it over into the engine. Um, well, that is if let me let me show this to you. Um, you can set up somewhere in here if I find it. Let's see where it was. Okay. So this is all. Yeah. Okay. So in your export settings, so right here you can also send this over to other software. So. Um, if you install, for example, I also have installed the plugin for Blender, and I can send this directly over to Blender as well. Um, so this this may be something that may be not set up correctly if, if you get an error, and you do have the plugin installed. So this is something you would have to change uh, depending on which software you're working with. Okay, so, um, all right. Well, maybe maybe let's do another one just for for good measure. So I'm gonna take that rock here too. Because it looks nice. And okay, we're gonna stick to 4K and we're gonna send that over too. And you can see how it's exporting. And that's all good. And now we no longer need the bridge. And now we should have a Megascans folder. It's right here. And we have the mossy rock and the uh, rocky ground. Well, hang on. No, that's not. Something went wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know what it is. I have another instance open of Unreal. Um, so what's happened is it, it sent it over to the to the wrong instance. So let me let me close the other instance of Unreal. And we'll do this again. Okay, so just closing the other one. should work. Okay. All right, so again, Tundra. And we're gonna 
to send that over. And then we're going to send the rock over too. And you see now it's coming up just fine here. Okay, so now we can take a look in in here, and now we have our three three D assets. So here's our gigantic tundra, and here is our uh, mossy boulder. And we can bring this in here, and you know you can see this is pretty big. So. Yeah, all right, so this looks pretty good in here. If we look at that, it's not too detailed in the in the foreground, so it's got to be a little bit farther away. You know, it's like one of those. Okay, let's take a look at our boulder. Let's see. So here's our boulder. a little small so I'm just gonna lock my scales here I'm just gonna up this to let's say 25 not a huge boulder and we're looking at the back side of our boulder obviously so it's not a completely round model going to come around lighting wise so for the demonstration here this is going to be better so you can see this better okay so the point here now is going to be that just trying to find a good spot here camera wise all right maybe here okay let's call it here okay so what what I'm trying to you know, the, the next thing we're going to try and do is we're going to try. So, but what you want to do is you want to build your landscape, you know, from the largest to the smallest. So, you know, eventually we're going to paint in grass in here and, you know, rocks. Um, but we're just creating an environment. This is not for a game to walk through. So, uh, in this case, it's, it's more, you know, it's for an XR screen for filming. Um, and and so we, we we really are you know mainly concerned about you know certain views you know it's like po potentially the reverse view but um, but we don't need a, a full environment to walk through um, and one of the things that you know you may may need, may end up needing to deal with are 
these transitions. Now, there are other assets you can stick in there and kind of like start to hide that. That will definitely work. But there is another technique that you could potentially use to um, to deal with that, and uh, that's what I'm going to show you on, on this one. So when you look at our boulder right here, so this is the material for our boulder, and if we're going to double click that, this is the material instance that came through. So we have here our instance, you already know what this is because we've, we've created an instance before. And uh, you can see right there that this instance has a parent. And this is this is our parent, and this is what we have to click to. Uh, you can click the you know magnifying glass or just the the, the 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 image, and this is going to open up the parent material. And this is the parent material for every single MegaScans asset. And this is important to note because if we make now a change to this. What's going to happen is that this change will apply to every single Megascans asset. Even if it's not yet imported, it will Im apply to all of them. So if you do want to have uh, this to not affect everything, then uh, you're going to need to make a copy of it, and you're going to have to you know, uh, in the instance, link this modified material. Okay, so right here, you would then, you know, link this to a different version of this material. We just give it a different name, and that would become the parent, and then that's that. So, um, so that's really, really important to to notice. Okay, so the quest that we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have right here now is what I want to do is I want to kind of like blend my my terrains better together and let's see if that maybe it's gonna work better without the tundra tundra terrain so I'm just gonna stick this down in here and maybe that's a better example yeah I think this is a better example because this actually fits better together and maybe we're gonna push that tundra terrain into the distance where are you I mean, this is just messing around with the aesthetics. It has actually nothing to do with the tutorial all that much, but it just bothers me. So here we go. This is better. All right. So you can see right there, we have a little more detail with less detail. Now I've got the lakes in there. So that, that actually is going to work. So I'm just going to go file, save all. And you also see an edge right here. I don't know if this is hovering. No, it's not. It's actually stuck in the ground. So this will affect now everything that we're going to do, including this edge. So we have an edge here, we have an edge here, and we're going to fix that. OK, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to modify that master material. And in order to do that, is I'm just going to make a little space here. And I'm going to create a break material attributes node. We've done this before. So I'm going to take this one. And we're going to do a make material attributes node, like so. And the reason why we're doing this is in order to be able to patch stuff in. The problem is you can see the way this is created here, even if I click on this. You know, um, well, I could theoretically patch this into here, right? So we're, we're, we're interested in the pixel depth offset. So we could patch it in here, but uh, then we'd have to figure out how to do this with, you know, the two different ones. Well, we're just going to make it simple. So we're just going to forget that this is here. And we're just going to patch this here in between. So we're going to go this in here. This is going to go in there. Got a little more 
space. We're going to bring this in here. And then I, I took a look at what um, what is being used here, right? So you can see right there, obviously base color, but you're also using metallic specular roughness, opacity, the normal subsurface color, right? Um, so you can you can see right here what's what's all being used. So because of that, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm connecting all of the stuff that is being used. So obviously base color, metallic, specular roughness, then the used opacity, normals, subsurface color. And now, you know, when we save that, absolutely nothing is going to have changed. It's going to be the exact same material. You know, it's like it just looks identical. There's no difference whatsoever. But now we have the possibility to plug something in, and that's what we're going to do. So in this case, we're going to create another node, and this is called Dither with an I. Dither then pour all AA. And we're going to add a multiply node because we want to have a perimeter so you know one and left click and then right click and convert to perimeter and we're gonna call this dither and we're gonna plug this into A plug this into B and then we're gonna plug this into pixel depth offset and we're gonna go ahead and apply and save and we've just modified the master material now still nothing is gonna have changed with one exception and that is if I can now go into the instance so the material is still looking all the same but if I now go into this instance right here then somewhere, as a matter of fact, right here, is Dither. And that's because we've just put it in. So I can turn this on now. And what's going to happen if I type in a number here is actually not the best thing. Let me just show you. Crank this up. And I don't like that at all. So in order for this to work correctly we are also going to have to you know go to our object and we're going to have to disable this here cast shadow in the lighting and in order for this to work also on the terrain we're also going to have to disable the cast shadow and now if I'm now gonna go in here go back to my dither settings and now let's see I'm going to have to find the right number it's, it's going to have to be a relatively high number let's try a thousand okay you just saw what happened right there let's do 1500 okay so we're starting to blend into the ground all right nicely so it's it's lo no longer a hard edge. So let me let me undo this. Undo. There we go. Hard edge. One thousand five hundred, and we have a blend. So right here we also have you know this terrain. We see a very hard edge right there. So um, let's open up the the material of our giant tundra terrain 
and we should also have now because we made the change in the master material so we should also have dither now in here and here it is turn it on type in 1500 here as well and oh this may be a here we probably have to play with it a little more seems like here it's digging into our lakes because they're too low As you can see that there are some limits let's take a look at this up close yep that digs up too low so you can see it working right here but it's also because our, our lakes are just that low in the surface it may not have much of an effect on here so much of a effect that's worth anything for us here well this one we'd have to cheat in a different way plain and simply but yeah, so now dithering is, is a little costly on the engine and in order to kind of like see where you're at with performance, you can always turn on your frames per second right here. So we can see, you know, we are, we are overall fine. So, uh, we may actually, when we build this foreground a little farther, we might actually turn off some of the displacement. There's not much on anyway, but that will help. Okay, and of course, you know, if you don't need the dithering, then you just don't don't use it. But you can see that this is a fairly nicely blend that we're getting here, and that does does help right I mean it really really nicely blends now into our into our terrain so even fairly up close all right well that was dithering I hope that helped you out and I'll see you around next time